Sorry, with the Times Colonist. Hello, Times Colonist. Hi, I, Rob Shaw. Are you? Uh, I know Rob Shaw. I'm, I write to you. Okay. Are you sort of coordinating? Can I interview you? Yes, you can. Okay. Tell me um, the petition. How long has it been going for? Yeah, that's pleasure. We have actually about thirty-five thousand signatures because we presented them all the way along. It's pleasure. So right now we're at uh, thirty thousand that we're presenting today. Uh, if you want the exact number, it's twenty-nine thousand and fifty-seven, and that's a small representation of the numbers of people across the city. <laughs> and uh, what else? What does the petition say specifically? What is it calling? The petition calls for a moratorium on the smart grid. That's what it calls for. That this whole program needs to be stopped. Oh yeah, not be properly thought through. And we believe, as people, that this needs to have a forensic accounting. Needs to be figured out as well as all the issues that are being raised worldwide. In the UK, it's an opt-in. Down into the US, the states are now producing no-fee opt-outs. So our position is that nobody should be penalized if they are financially not able to pay some kind of fee for a choice. Fee for choice sounds a bit like extortion in a democratic society. So we believe no fee opt out so that people elderly on a pension or people with disabilities, many people with MS, do not want any wireless intrusions in their home. Uh, people with other conditions who are on a disability pension shouldn't have to pay to keep the home safe. And uh, Mr. Horgan's uh, position or the NDP's position to go to the Utilities Commission and ask for a wired option that would have a fee? Is that acceptable? Well, that is where the public voice can speak out. And in all places where the democratic uh, process is held paramount, as should have happened in British Columbia, we're not a dictatorship yet, so as should have happened, uh, people can then speak to that, to the BCUC. And this is where we all have a wonderful right and opportunity, and the burden of democracy falls upon all of us to get there and speak out. What's your understanding of the current situation with smart meters? We heard the energy minister talk about not forcing I think them on people. I think they're very confused. I think the BC Liberals are dancing a tap dance called how can I win the election and how can I dance as quick as possible and do the right fancy footwork. Uh, I hope that they don't get back in again because I don't believe one word of what they say. They're saying basically we won't force you till after the election. What a disgusting ploy. Are, are people still being forced now? Absolutely. They're still being forced. The, there's propaganda coming out from the BC Liberals saying we will not force you without your consent. And yet every single day, signs are being taken down, people are being uh, harassed. So basically, what is happening is the installers are saying anything and everything that they can to intimidate people, especially elderly people or women by themselves to intimidate them to take a smart meter. There is no end to the continued force of smart meters against the will of the homeowner or the resident. Great. Sorry, can I grab your name? It's Una St. Clair, Citizens for Safe Technology Society. Can you help me spell it? U-N-A-S-T-C-L-A-I-R. Yeah. Okay. And sorry, I'm losing track of all the different groups involved. But that we work hand in hand with the Coalition to Stop Smart Meters. Okay. So it's, that's Sharon Noble who yeah. runs that one. Yeah. And Citizens for Safe Technology Society uh, works hand in hand with the Coalition. However, yeah. every single group, we are all together okay. and we come at, at this whole problem from different angles. And uh, each person, your, each group is following their own path to, uh, to rectify this problem. Okay, great. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you.